Hey, it's Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and I'm coming to you from my new house in Durango, Colorado. Uh, I should say Stefan and I's new house. So some of you probably know this from being part of my email community or my online courses, but we were in California previously since January. And as of right now, this is August, 2019. Uh, we have moved back to Colorado, not all the way back to where we were before in Boulder. And we absolutely love Durango, so I can't wait to show you some of the scenery around here because we'll probably film some videos outdoors around here because it's gorgeous. So today I'm answering a question that's kind of a follow-up of some of the videos I've been putting out recently. Um, and so if you haven't seen those, I recommend that you go watch them, but it's all about the fascial adhesion or clunk. And um, I recently put out a video about you know, what is the clunk? Is it the muscle belly that you're just rolling over? Is it the fascia? And how do you tell the difference? So I definitely recommend that you go watch that one. But a lot of people have been asking me, even before I put out that video, but definitely after. So I've been releasing fascia, you know, finding the clunk, rolling over it a few times, and it's not disappearing. Am I doing something wrong? And some people, you know, maybe try it for a week and it's still there and they wonder if they're doing something wrong, if the adhesion is still there. So today I'm going to talk about, you know, how long does it actually take for that adhesion to disappear or will it ever actually disappear? probably going to notice a theme with almost all of my answers to these sorts of questions, but it really depends on the person. So as a lot of you know, I've been working with people in pain uh, since 2008, finding fascial adhesions, trying to release them. Uh, and a lot of my clients do completely eliminate their fascial adhesions, but not everybody does. So you can have a fascial adhesion or many of them throughout your body and not actually be in pain. So pain is another interesting topic and it's not today's topic. So I recommend that you go watch a recent video I did on that, um, which is all about, you know, is pain always related to fascia or fascial adhesions? Um, but for the purposes of today's video, I'm just gonna talk about those fascial adhesions and what you should look out for or try to do or pay attention to in your body um, to know if it's maybe ever gonna disappear. So personally, my adhesions never really disappear. They get smaller and smaller and smaller if I'm consistent with my fascia release. Um, but my calf adhesions, for example, my quad adhesions and my biceps, they never really go away. But I can get completely pain-free and even really optimized and still have some fascial adhesions and it's not an issue. Uh, and this, I believe, is a matter of body type and maybe you could even call it fascia type. And also it relates to your nervous system. Uh, so some people are built more compact and wiry, right? They tend to be kind of skinny um, and, and their fascia may be a bit stringy. So if this describes you, you may have stringy or, you know, like fibrous fascia um, for the rest of your life and you can definitely get it more optimized. You're probably gonna have fewer adhesions. Um, and then people that are kind of built like me, I was a gymnast, I'm a little bigger, I'm not skinny and it never will be. Um, I typically tend to hold on to some of those adhesions. Um, and then of course there's everything in between. So stress is definitely gonna play a part in whether those adhesions actually disappear or not. Um, and then the effectiveness with which you're doing the fascia release will make a difference as well. So to truly break up those fascial adhesions for good, you have to shear those fibers really effectively and precisely. And that's kind of difficult, especially with self-help. Um, and you know, my main point is gonna be, you don't have to eliminate the fascial adhesion to get out of pain. So I've probably talked about this other places as well, but it's worth repeating. There are four major stages that I, you know, wanna put people through when they first come to me, whether it's here on YouTube, in my online courses, or um, with my in-person clients. And that is my number one goal is to get you out of pain. So I wanna take care of like whatever fire is happening and get you out of pain. And then I want to get, you know, make sure we find the root cause and get the pain eliminated at the source if we can. Um, and then I want to optimize you. So I want you to go towards optimization, which means head to toe fascia release until 
Um, it's fully healthy fascia. You're buoyant and light and springy and all that good stuff. Um, and then you're going to maintain optimization. You might reach optimization and still have some fascial adhesions. This happens with some people. Totally fine. So those though are the four stages I would want you to go through when you're first doing fascia release. So if you have pain currently right now, your number one goal is to get out of pain. Then it's to find the root cause. Then you want to go towards optimization. So along that path, if your adhesions are not disappearing, don't worry about it. Um, you're, you know, the sign that you're completely solving your pain isn't a lack of adhesions. It's a lack of a pain signal. So that's what you want to look for when you're on this path. Um, and if your adhesions do disappear, awesome. You're one of the people who maybe can get them completely eliminated, at least in some parts of your body. Now, if you're not in pain and you're watching this video and you're wanting to go towards optimization, uh, then I would just say your goal would be to do fascia release head to toe until it doesn't hurt anymore to release. Um, and you want to, you know, graduate yourself to higher and higher levels of intensity. So maybe at first, let's say when you're releasing your calves, your quads, you can only stand a few, you know, like a little body weight on a roller, and then you graduate to more and more weight on whatever tool you're using. Um, and the more weight you use, the more effective you're going to be, the more intense it's going to be. However, as you add more and more weight, you're going to discover that if you keep going with this process, it doesn't hurt as much. And you want to get to the place where you can put a lot of weight, say on the calves, your quads, your biceps, wherever, and it just doesn't hurt. It can absorb that impact without giving you any intensity or pain. And that is an indication that your fascia has reached um, a stage of optimization or at least really healthy, it's really healthy um, fascia at that point. And then you want to maintain that. And I know everybody, probably you two are wondering, yeah, okay, but what does that mean for, you know, should I do it once a day, once a week? Um, and again, everybody's a little different. So my number one recommendation always is for you to get to know your body. Because even though I'm here on YouTube and I wanna get to know you, I may not ever really get to know you. We may not have a conversation, but if you leave a comment, I would love to come talk to you. So I want you to explore your body and start to learn how your body resp responds to fascia release without hopefully getting sore. So that's your number one goal is like, don't overdo it and get sore. Um, and you could do it every day if you want. So it's a matter of your schedule, your time, your patience, your commitment. Uh, and then you'll reach a point where you need less of it less often. And that's when you're maintaining your optimization. So. Again, I hope this makes sense, and I'm just gonna recap real quick. If you're here in pain, your number one goal is to get out of pain, to put that fire out, then find the root cause, then go towards optimization of your fascial system, and then you wanna maintain optimization, which is a lot easier to do um, than problem solving pain or when you're first starting out with fascia release. It's kind of like other things, right? Like if you're losing weight, it's harder in the beginning. Um, if you've been out of shape, like I kind of am right now, a little bit in mountain shape, you're gonna get really sore if you go climb a mountain like I am right now from a mountain I just climbed a couple days ago. Um, but then it gets, if you keep going, it gets easier and easier. And the same thing is true with fascia release. And so you wanna get to that place of optimization and then maintain it. So I hope that answers your question of will the fascial adhesions ever disappear? I know it wasn't just super succinct, but everybody's different. We're gonna all react different, differently to fascia release. So leave your takeaway about your body below in the comments. I would love to hear what you think You know, your fascia type maybe is or your body type. Do you think your fascial adhesions will ever disappear? Or do you think you're maybe somebody who's gonna be able to optimize but not have the fascial adhesions disappear? And I would love for you to share where you're at on the journey of those four steps. Are you getting out of pain? Are you finding the root cause? Are you optimizing or are you maintaining optimization? Share that below in the comments and I'll definitely see you there. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe and hit notifications. We have new videos that go out every Monday and Wednesday. And if you'd like to join my email community, which you should, it's awesome. Um, I share tips and stories I don't share anywhere else and you'll get notified of every new video. And I've got some free gifts for you. If you want to join that, you can click the link below this video in the description. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.